For decades, our understanding of the brain's internal conversation with itself, which we technically eavesdrop on, was dominated by neurons, the known chatterbox of these intricate organs. However, recent studies are shifting this perspective, unveiling the significance of thousands of different types of overlooked brain cells, and of special importance to AI researchers, one type of glial cell called astrocytes. Nerdy sounding terms, but they're impressive enough that they're worth learning about. So here's news for you, the NIH Brain Initiative has created the most comprehensive cellular maps to date of the human brain. And they made these maps in both adult brains, developing brains, and the brains of certain animals. Now, if you're like most of us, you probably learned that there was just one, like that's the type of cell, but it turns out they come in so many different flavors. And that creates a whole new level of complexity to how the human brain works. And that's really interesting. I've always thought the difference between person A and person B was simply how the 80 billion neurons were connected, the strength and weight of the different ways that they're connected throughout the experiences that person had in their life. Well, if there's different types of neurons, are you born with different types of neurons? Is that impacted by the way that you grow up? How does that actually influence the way we think? Is there patterns there? Maybe AI can step in and start putting all of this together to give us a new understanding of how consciousness, the human brain, the mind actually works. In fact, some research has already been done comparing the human brain to the brain of non-human primates. And they uncovered unique genetic patterns. So maybe we actually evolved a new type of cell and that's kind of what makes us different from our non-human primates? I don't know, maybe. And that might explain why it feels like humans and homo sapiens think so differently from our closest ancestors. There's also some really interesting studies being done now about how inflammation affects the developing brain and how it might influence some conditions like autism or schizophrenia, which really does resonate with me. I do think that modern America or like first world countries, one of the problems that we have is just toxins, bad pollution, it's weird stuff in our food, it's lyphosate and plastic in the stuff that we eat. What would all that stuff do when it's in your immune system? It would cause inflammation. That would mean like your body's just like attacking all day long, all this weird stuff that it doesn't recognize. And when your body's always inflamed, always engaged, you have all these like white blood cells always trying to clean up your body, then you're not gonna develop correctly because that's all going into the brain during the development process. Back to the fact that we have different types of neuronal cells and that the studies being done on them represent a milestone in the way that we think about the human brain. And it's definitely gonna lay the groundwork that might lead for new kinds of targeted therapeutics and hopefully maybe cure or help some of these brain disorders that we're suffering from right now. But that's not the end of the story because it's not just the neurons that are conducting electricity in our brain that make us think the way we think. There's also help coming from the glial cells. As a reminder, the glial cells in our brain are actually defined as the non-neuronal cells, and they don't have a charge of electricity, they don't have synaptic connections, they don't do what a neuron does, so they were always considered something that never impacted the way that electricity moves around our brain. But like everything that we think we know in science, when you actually get in there and test it and push things around, everything's way more connected than we would have ever thought, and it turns out that there's some glial cells that have a significant impact in the way that we think. Basically, they play a supporting role in the function of a neuron, they're not the magic. They help achieve what's like homeostasis, if you remember that, or myelination, where you actually put the kind of insulation around the neuron so the electricity doesn't break out until it gets to the end of the synaptic connection. And there's a whole bunch of different types of glial cells also, so they support in different ways, but one that I'm gonna focus in on right now is called an astrocyte. A new science is showing that this cell is doing more than just supporting the brain. It is a player in our thoughts. Astrocytes are a type of glial cell. You find them in the brain and in the spinal cord. They're pretty unique because they're star-shaped and they're super abundant everywhere in the central nervous system. Now we've already known that astrocytes can modulate, they call it modulating a neurotransmitter, and they can even help create scar tissue after a nervous system injury. You know, and that scar tissue thing is a reason why it's been studied for a while, especially because maybe something like Alzheimer's is happening because of these amyloid plaques, maybe it's buildup of some kind. Scar tissue is the kind of thing that can build up over time, so it's been looked at for that reason. But also back in the 1990s, it was discovered that these astrocytes could actually modulate glutamate. Now glutamate is a key neurotransmitter. So when you see something that can regulate something so important, it's also worth paying attention to. But for decades and decades, we had reason to pay attention to these things. And recently, we've had a breakthrough. They have presented compelling evidence that over these 10 years of research that they've been doing, that these glial cells actually play a pivotal role in the way the neurons think, the way that they work, and the way that they come together to make who we are. There is specific machinery inside astrocytes that allow it to modulate, either store, regulate, or provide 
glutamate, the neurotransmitter. So to summarize, they are not capable of emitting an electrical signal. So they're not a neuron, but how the electrical signal works is how we think and glutamate can absolutely regulate that. And these cells can either provide it, hold it, store it, or withhold it from the neuron that means they're playing a pivotal role in the way that we think. And the way that these glial cells interact with the neurons can completely change the way that the neuron overall responds to something like noradrenaline. And maybe that will open the door to like new ADHD medications or some kind of explanation for why ADD is on the rise. And of course, I couldn't leave this video without talking about artificial intelligence. Luckily, something like this provides a new architecture, an experiment that we can do in silicon to maybe see if we can build better neural networks. And that's exactly the way these researchers were thinking. This paper explores the potential of a neuron astrocyte network in the brain to perform computations similar to those of the famous AI transformer. The researchers are proposing that neuron astrocyte modeled networks through interconnected feedback loops and something very similar to how an astrocyte actually works in the brain could naturally implement something that looks a whole lot like the famous transformer powering chat GPT, which is really significant for AI researchers. What if we figured out a new architecture and all of a sudden the models we have are going to be like, poof, they're going to blow up because we were missing something in the brain that we didn't understand before. We were always modeling neurons. What if we start modeling glial cells and neurons because there's interplay there that we were missing before? So the model that they're proposing is based on something called a tripart synapse. Tripart just meaning divided into three. And the three parts would be the common connection between an astrocyte, a presynaptic neuron, and a postsynaptic neuron, which is what they hypothesize is actually what's performing the, the similar function of normalization that we do inside of a neural network. And that's the transformer self-attention mechanism. The team's approach involves tying weights within a single transformer block and creating a neuron astrocyte network that alternates between writing and reading phases. So they claim that this design addresses the non-logical operations in space and time that are required by transformers, with the astrocyte processes actually modulating the synaptic weights. Their model even does all sorts of crazy stuff that you only read about in AI research papers, like these things called random feature maps, um, spherical normalization to approximate the softmax self-attention mechanism, just mathematics for evening things out basically. And they're claiming that these numeratical validations, basically like validation metrics, indicate that these neuron astrocyte networks can closely replicate the output of an AI transformer block, which suggests, wait for it, a biological basis for transformer-like computations in the brain. And they posit in the paper that you can basically do any kind of transformer in the brain, which also might have some kind of a connection with evolution, right? If evolution hit upon this combination, maybe that's why it kept these astrocyte glial cells everywhere where the neurons are, in the spine, the gut, the brain, and all over our bodies. Two together might be part of the special, special complexity, complexity that, that actually makes us who we are and might be super important for artificial intelligence going forward. So anyways, glial that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.